Hello students, welcome back to my class. Today I am here to discuss few questions as demanded by some of you. The questions today I will take up are from Barrier Elwin's travel writing. A pilgrimage to Tawang. And I will take up two questions which are quite significant from your examination point of view. The question, the first question is about the concept of pilgrimage that why does Elwin call his journey to Tawang a pilgrimage or this question can be asked also in the form of what is a pilgrimage and how far Barrier Elwin's travel will be treated as a pilgrimage. So coming to the concept of pilgrimage, if we look at the explanation or the definition given by Wikipedia. A pilgrimage is a journey often into an unknown or foreign place where a person goes in search of new or expanded meaning about their self, others, nature or a higher good through the experience that lead to a personal transformation. So, pilgrimage is a travel which can bring the personal transformation. But in India, conventionally, because we are dealing with the travel to Tawang, which is in India, and Elwin also writing from the point of view of the Indian. So, conventionally, if we look at the pilgrimage, the pilgrimage in that sense is not much different from Wikipedia, but particularly confined as a journey undertaken for the purpose of visiting places of religious significance and collecting spiritual experiences. It may, may be undertaken by an individual or a group or in a company. <coughs> the pilgrimage in general animates the dichotomy between the individual and universal as well as mundane and spiritual. The travels of Verrier Elwin about his second visit to Tawang, the Buddhist monastery in present day Arunachal Pradesh or in those days called as Nefa, which is also one of the significant monasteries of Buddhism and its Mahayana sect is more of a pilgrimage by experience because he is going to that place of religion. So, conventionally it is a pilgrimage. He had undertaken that journey along with his wife to attend the 2500 birth anniversary of Lord Buddha. So, this is conforming to the conventional concept of pilgrimage. And now, if we analyze that how far his visit to Tawang is a proper pilgrimage or is there any other ideas being submerged. So, confirming to that concept of pilgrimage, we can analyze and we find that First of all, 
he was going there to attend the 2500 birth anniversary of Lord Buddha. So, it is the most significant demand for this journey to be a pilgrimage. And secondly, we will find that he was trying to recapture the plight of Dalai Lama, the spiritual leader of Tibet, also a Buddhist nation and Dalai Lama is one of the most significant Buddhist personality, a sacred personality who travelled from Tibet, Lhasa to Tezpur under the duress of the Chinese and he is going to revisit that path of the flight in a reverse order to recapture the spiritual spirit of Dalai Lama in such flight because Dalai Lama escaped to India not only to keep himself away from direct confrontation of the Chinese troops to save his people by other means, but also it was Dalai Lama's pilgrimage to India because he wanted to escape with his complete spiritual entity experiences because he knew that India is a land of spirituality and here only that spirituality of Buddhism followed by him and his people will be safe. So, this is the second reason that why we can call this pilgrimage to Tawanga Bharir Elwin as a pilgrimage. So, it is though Elwin is narrating in the essay, in the writing that he is being accompanied by government official up to certain distance up to the Bomdila valley. But this is basically a spiritual quest. And thirdly, he was mesmerized by the natural beauty of different valleys in Nepha. Bomdila, Sela, which are situated in some 8000 and 14000 feet above sea level with exquisite natural beauty. And this natural beauty with crystal clear rivers, waterfalls, streams, as well as the rendezvous of color in flora and landscape makes it a spiritual experience. As if the spirit of the universe is manifested through these things which made the writer submerge his own spirit within it. And particularly he was impressed by the twin lakes at say La on some 14,000 feet height above the sea level and he calls it as the eyes of the God. So, that spirit of divinity is manifested through nature to the writer. So, this is definitely a spiritual journey. And he also came across villages and temples with great prayer wheels and he felt as if these prayer wheels and the flags are continuously chanting that Buddhist mantras or the hymns Om Mani Padmeham, Om Mani Padmeham. So, in this way, Vary Ralwin is experiencing the spiritual 
atmosphere, the spiritual sense everywhere that he is going through. The ambience of nature and religion enthralled the spirit of Elwin beyond his expectation. The concept of pilgrimage in Elwin's journey to Tawan is reinforced by his receptions at different villages. So that is also adding to the spiritual quest or the spiritual transformation. He has been received at different villages much before he enters the village, the village headmen, the lamaj, the children, the women come with vivid dress of their own, colorful dresses, offering them the scarves and with trumpets, with pipes, they were received. So this is no less than a spiritual experience for Halloween. And he praises the people of this part of the world as highly civilized and he is also finding a beautiful blend of the paganism on the part of these tribal people and the refined spirituality on the part of Buddhism coexisting so peacefully, so harmoniously with nature. And in every village, they were also offered very ceremoniously, very ritualistically the drinks of the butter tea and other drinks. And this is also no less than a spiritual ritual. And they were also housed in the temples and tents decorated with flowers brought a great sense of happiness which is spiritual by its simplicity and purity. And in this context, <coughs> he is telling that they were stayed in a temple. It was refreshing to be in a really natural religious environment in a temple where you could put up your camp bed and sleep under the gentle and compassionate gaze of the statues. In Buddhism, religion is not a thing apart from life. It is a part of it. So in this way, he is accepting that stay in that village under the statues of Buddha as a perfectly religious experience of his life. And he encountered a different world of spirituality within the monastery of Tawang. When he approached the Tawang monastery, he was overwhelmed with its spiritual dignity, with its spiritual uniqueness within the nature. And he is singularly impressed by the abbot, the priests and each and every part of this monastery. His sen senses and spirit were humbled by the majesty and grace of prayer halls, rituals, the sacred books and the huge teapots in the kitchen. Categorically, he describes the abbot of Tawang as a real saint and the Getumpaj as the real books he had ever came across. Elwin's journey discovers a perfect blending between the paganism of the Mompaj and the refinement of Buddhism. It also discovers the singular civilized culture of the Mompaj that humbled his ego of coming from a civilized West. Thus, the whole experience brought to him a self-induced humbleness. 
it brought to him a self-induced humbleness, discipline, and experience of spiritualism in a comprehensive manner. So, it is not only his visit only to Tawang or those 2500 butter lamps or images created out of the butter of Buddha, but everything from his journey on the way to Bomdila, Sela, to Tawang, the processions, every aspect of this journey brought within him a comprehensive transformation. He is transformed, he is touched by the people, the Mompaj, their simple life, their civilized sense of accepting the strangers and their culture, everything impressed him. Therefore, the journey is called as a pilgrimage. The second question, which is also very important, is that of examine very relevance a pilgrimage to Tawan as a travel literature or what is a travelogue? How far elements a pilgrimage to Tawang will be accepted as a travel elaborate? So, first of all, we have to look at what is a travel log or what is a travel literature. So, if we look at the conventional travel literature, particularly in western world, we find from 2nd century AD the travel literature is existing and the travel literature is basically an outdoor literature and it is a longer narrative about a journey to a place and it is categorized with non-fiction literature and where the journey is about a specific definition. And gradually, down the ages, we come to realize that travel literature or a travelogue is mostly a literature written by a person undertaking a journey to a far off land, a foreign land or in a new adventure to a place and to explore about its people, its culture, its religion, so on and so forth. And very relevant as we know, a person who travelled very extensively in India and particularly in the tribal world, he writes this pilgrimage to Tawang in a form of a travelogue. So, in the first part of the answer, we have to define what is a travelogue. A travelogue is not an ordinary narrative about the travel of an individual or a group. It is more often a conscious effort to delineate the individual or group experience about the difference between one and another people, one and another people. The interaction is more important. As A. Richardson defines a travelogue as a communication between different set of values. It is a communication between a different set of values, religious, cultural, political, etc. It often takes place through the narrative of a particular individual who has gone beyond the physical or geographical aspect of a new place and its people. From this point of view, if we consider very Alvin's a pilgrimage to Tawang, it comes out with a great success. It is more than an anthropological journey into the remote tribal part of Northeast. And Elwin in the present essay records 
His second visit to Tawang on the occasion of the 2500th birth anniversary of Lord Buddha, which was an official visit, but he is taking his wife Lila along with him. But in the beginning, he refers to the early visit on his part in retracing the flights of Dalai Lama from Tibet to Dharamsala. He also differentiates between the two journeys by their route, accessibility and urgency. In the body of the essay, it is a languid narrative about various river valleys and hills that is that he came across not only very euphoristically he records the pristine natural beauty of Arunachal but also analyzes each and every aspect of the life of the natives. He wonders at the remoteness of these pagan people from the mainland civilization and at the same time marvels at their refinement in sensibility and culture. He also praises these people for their textiles, their designs, their harmony with nature and all that. Particularly, he celebrates the beauty of Se La in the tone of Al-Baruni. He is wonderstruck at their lakes which are called Eyes of God. Elwin's narrative is replete with the overwhelming enthusiasm both on his part and the people of the valley. Very faithfully, he records their way of reception, hospitality and friendliness, their rituals and also in a very uh, ironical manner or with humor, he is also presenting their different rituals which are very strange to him. He also with a tweak of mischievous recounts about the tradition of offering drinks and the way to avoid it. He also narrates the social mannerism and civilization of the Mompaj, taking off their hats and holding them between their hands to make a little bow at every word spoken to them. They never use harsh words nor their children ever cry. In the process of the journey, his reception and interaction with the monks of Tawang monastery and the splendor of it are also very impartially and very selectively or immaculately narrated. He was struck by the Gatampas and the huge teapots. His comparison between the monastery and British universities bring a new dimension to the narrative. A pilgrimage to Tawang is definitely a travelogue because it goes beyond the physical interaction with a new land and its people. With subtleness, it analyzes various ways of the Mompa people and their peaceful coexistence with a refined religion like Buddhism. Elwin overcomes a narrow view of anthropology to propagate humanism at its best through this essay. It provides an in interesting view of the Tawang Valley with which the reader can easily associate and communicate. So, this essay is not only giving us the geographical information about Tawang's position and its strategic significance for India, its climate, its flora, its tribes, their life, everything is discussed in every detail. And he places Tawang historically giving us brief but important historical background of the region as well. So, in this way, it is 
definitely a travel look. So, in this way, we can answer to those questions and there can be, you can add to these answers. Elwin as a writer, prose writer, he writes very simple prose, but at the same time, he uses lots of comparisons, humor and irony sometimes. But most of all, in his writing, there is a sense of friendliness, there is a sense of sharing that is very invaluable. I hope you will be definitely benefited by this discussion. Thank you.